All right, AP Chemistry Notes 99 to 104, our one and only organic chemistry lesson. Uh, I will assume you don't have a background in organics, so some of this will be review for some of you. We'll start by classifying some stuff. There is a group of molecules, typically known as hydrocarbons, because they have hydrogen and carbon. It's that simple. Um, the lightweight ones are gases like methane. A lot of the medium weight ones are liquids like octane, C8H18. And some of the really big ones are actually solids like uh, candle wax, which would be a really big one like C20H42. And it's just a bunch of carbons all bonded together covalently with hydrogen sticking off wherever needed to give carbon always four bonds. So carbon must have four bonds always. And hydrogen, of course, always has one bond. So as soon as you bond it to something, it's done. Whether it's bonded to itself, another hydrogen, I mean, or bonded to uh, carbons. There's three basic categories, alkanes, alkenes, alkynes, and notice the ending's a little different. If it's an alkane, they are all single bonds. If it's an alkene, there is a double bond. It says only one double bond. You can have more than one double bond, but we'll just focus on one. And if it's an alkyne, it has a triple bond. So let me clean up the notes here a little and show some examples of that. So if I take something like get rid of all this stuff, start over. Uh, let's just do two carbons. This, and where I don't draw something attached, just assume there's a hydrogen there. That would be an alkane. This would be an alkene, and this would be an alkyne. Now, there's a mathematical pattern, and again, we're assuming if it has a double, there's only one double, and if it has a triple, there's only one triple. There's a mathematical pattern here that they follow. Notice in the first one, the number of carbons was two and the number of hydrogens was six. So the hydrogen in an alkane is always double the number of carbons plus two. In the case of a double bond, because of the double bond, that's two less hydrogens you need. So that's C2H4. So the hydrogen is just double the number of carbons. And in the triple bond, it's C2H2. So it's double minus two. Now you might think, why not just say the hydrogen is equal to the carbon? Uh, it doesn't always work out that way. It depends on the complexity of the molecule. And I started with the simplest example. So that's why it just happened to be a one-to-one -one situation. Um, another word that'll pop up is saturated and unsaturated. It's said to be saturated if it has as many bonds as it can. So if you can't make any more attachments and so forth, and you can't attach any more hydrogens, then it is said to be saturated, and hence that means all single bonds. So saying saturated hydrocarbon is redundant if saying alkane. Alkane and saturated hydrocarbon are the same thing. If you have a double or a triple or both, then you're said to be unsaturated, meaning you're not full of attachments. And if something just said unsaturated hydrocarbon and nothing else, you wouldn't know whether it was a double bond or a triple bond, or if it's a big molecule, it might even have both or multiple of both. As things, the molecules get big, you can have a lot of these. So based on this pattern, if you look here at this 
check. This first one, the hydrogen, is double the carbon. So that must be an alkene, otherwise known as a double bond. The second one is double plus two, so that's got to be an alkane, otherwise known as all single bonds or saturated. And the third one, the hydrogen is double minus two, and that's why it would be known as an alkyne or a triple bond. Also unsaturated, but again, unsaturated isn't specific about what type of double or triple bond you have. Now, naming this stuff. This is where a lot of people in college, when they take organic chemistry, things get real complicated. We're just going to do some basics here. What you do is you start with the carbons and you count how many carbons are in the longest row. If there's a double or triple bond, you include it in your longest row, even if it isn't the longest, but you're forced to deal with it. And I'll show you what to do. And then however many carbons are in your longest row, you put a prefix to say how many there are. And the prefixes are here, meth, eth, prop, but, pent, hex, hept, oct, non, and dec. It does go beyond 10, but we're just gonna stick to 10. You then put the appropriate ending based on whether it has single, double, or triple bonds. Uh, the best thing to do is just jump into some. Let's just do some of these things. So take this first example here. It what I recommend you do, by the way, is oh, ignore this. Apparently, this was uh, fixed in your notes, but it's still in my old notes. I recommend. That you circle the main chain. Now, in this case, the main chain is just the longest row of carbons, which is all of them. Count them. There are five carbons. So five carbons is pent. There's a double bond. So pentene, ene, as an alkene. And then you have to say where the double bond is. So you have to number your carbons. Now, I can number from left to right. One, two, three, four five, and I could say that the double bond is between carbons four and five, but we like low numbers, so it would be better if I were to number the other way, backwards, in other words, from right to left, one, two, three, four, five. Now the double bond is between carbons one and two, and you only have to mention the first carbon. It's assumed that it continues to the following carbon, and we say one pentene. And a person reading this, when they see this, they would go, oh, five carbons, in, there's a double bond somewhere. Oh, it starts on carbon one. And they might say, well, over here's carbon one, and it has to continue to its neighboring carbon, so there's my double bond. They might also do this. They might start here as carbon one, and then they put the double bond there. It's the same thing. What I have drawn in red and what is drawn in black in your notes are the same thing. You're just looking at the same molecule from two different viewpoints. And we'll talk about that in a, in a moment um, and how to deal with that. So one pentene is the first one. It may seem tricky right now, but it actually becomes pretty quick once you get used to it. All right, isolate the main chain. Oops. That's not the main chain. You just want to do carbons. I got a hydrogen in there. You don't want to include the hydrogens. We don't even mention them. You just assume that there's enough hydrogens so that every carbon has four bonds. So how many do we have here? One, two, three, four, five, six carbons. That's hex. There's a triple bond. So ein. The triple bond is between carbons two and three. If you number this, it's carbon one on the far right, then two, three, four, five, and six. And since the triple bond starts at carbon two, you only mention the first one, so two hexine. Again, because we don't even mention the hydrogens, a common way of drawing this molecule would be like what I have here. You don't even draw them at all. And anyone who knows what they're talking about, they know that this carbon on the left must have three hydrogens 
so that it has four bonds, then two, then two, then none, because it has four bonds, then none, because it has four bonds, and then three again. So an experienced person would just imagine those carbons, excuse me, they would imagine those hydrogens if needed. You also might see it done this version here. This is called the condensed formula. It is essentially the same thing as what's up here, but they've just thrown the hydrogens in with the carbon. So notice this first chunk that I'm highlighting in purple is CH3. So CH3. Second chunk, I'll switch colors. Let's go blue. CH2 here. Third chunk. CH2, then just two carbons, so CC, and the last chunk, CH3. That's what they're showing you in that case. All right, next page, some more practice. If I said name C2H6, you would just think C, C, and one, two, three, four, five, six, single bonds, two carbons, Eth name. If I said name this, we have a problem. We've got this thing sticking out there. That's called a branch. So let's ignore that for a moment. So ignore what I have circled in purple. Let's highlight the main chain. Main chain is here. There's a bunch of hydrogens that have not been shown. So just forget about them for now. We count our carbons, there are eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So that's oct. There's a triple bond, octine. The triple bond starts on carbon number four. because it's one, two, three, four. So four octine. Now we gotta deal with what I have circled in purple. That is called a branch. The way you name a branch, is you give it the ending YL and it's pronounced O. And then you use the same prefixes for the number of carbons. So notice in purple, there's one carbon, which is meth. And then you add the O, so that's methyl. And when someone reads methyl, they go, oh, one carbon which I can't draw the number one apparently, one carbon branch. And you have to say where it is. Well, it's sticking off the main chain of carbon number three. So three methyl. So let's draw this just for practice. If I go to draw three methyl four octine, start with oct. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Ein means there's a triple bond on carbon four. So one, two, three, four, triple bond. Three methyl means on carbon three, there's a single carbon branch. So go to carbon three and then stick one carbon off of it. You don't have to worry about attaching any hydrogens at all, unless you're asked to. So be careful. If it ever says to show all the hydrogens, make sure you do it. But if it doesn't say show the hydrogen, I say don't bother. And that's it. Now you'll notice that the example, it kind of curved. It went straight to the right and then it went down. Things bend all over the place. Just go with the bend. So I drew it straight because that's easier, but it could curve all over the place. So for example, let me draw this again. And actually, a way that's actually more accurate to what really exists. Um, you, you can go all funky and like this. I'll just make some stuff up here. Oh, wait, where's the triple bond? It's there. So it would probably be more like this. And then let's go up there just for the fun of it. And then let's go over here and so on. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And I need one. So let's just say I do it like that, and then I would still put my triple bond, which was on carbon four, yeah. And then the methyl was on carbon three, so it would be something like that. That's actually, it, I don't know for sure, but it would actually look something more like what I drew 
We just don't normally bother with all that. Okay, if you were going to name this one C4H8, if you start writing this out, you'll think, okay, one, two, three, four. But the problem is, if you put eight hydrogens, you'll go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I don't have enough hydrogens. And you'll notice that the number of hydrogen is double the carbon. That means there must be a double bond somewhere, but I don't know where it is. It didn't tell me. So all I can do is say that it's butene. I can't say that the double bond is here as in one butene or two butene because uh, I wasn't given enough information. So just butene is as much as I can do. Now, it could also be a cyclic molecule like this, but I think we're gonna do that later, so don't worry about that right now. All right, halogenated hydrocarbons. So, still a hydrocarbon, but we're gonna add a little spice. We're gonna put a halogen in it. So you keep all the same naming things, and you just say where the halogen is and name the halogen fluoro, chloro, bromo, iota, whatever is appropriate. So if I go here, you'll find you'll get faster. The main chain is octane. And on carbon four, there is a fluoro. So four fluoro octane. Next one, main chain, nonane. I don't know, this is awkward. Now notice there's two chlorines. So I have a chloro here and I have a chloro here. One of them's on carbon two, the other one's on carbon three. So this is two, three. Now if you were to say two chloro, three chloro, Nonane, you're not wrong. That makes sense. If you tell someone that, they'll know what to do. But you can combine it and say 2,3-dichloro, meaning there's two chloros, one of them on carbon 2, one on carbon 3. This next one, main chain, six carbons with a double bond, so hexene, double bonds on carbon 2, and there's a 3-bromo. Now, as I mentioned before, we can have cyclic structures like so. Now, if it is all single bonds, which is crossed out there, but I think I, I rewrote it as assuming all single bonds. Yeah, cyclic structures can have double and triple bonds, but assuming that it's all single bonds, it follows this formula. So for example, when I went back up here and I saw this C4H8, the fact that the hydrogen was double the number of carbon means that there was either a double bond somewhere, butene, or it was cyclic, like that. And the way you name these is you just put the word cyclo in front, which sounds cool. So take this one. Now, when you look at this one, you might think, what the heck happened here? Why does it look like a geometry thing? Well, every corner is a carbon. So another way I could draw this would be. Like that and then stick a oh wait a second sorry let's not do that i skipped ahead this is the wrong page no wonder i was going to say that's a benzene that's page 100 we need to go to this this is going to make a lot more sense Whew, that was wait I, I was doing like three jumps at the same time so add cyclo but otherwise everything's the same assuming it's all single bonds still ended in a so here Four carbons is but, single bonds, butane, and it's a ring, so cyclobutane. Ah, here we go. Now it makes sense that we make a small progression in the notes as opposed to skipping a page. The corners, like I was saying, are carbons, so this would be carbon, carbon. Oh, this is going to be so much easier for you guys. Like that. So that would be cyclohexane. Now we'll throw in some double bonds and take a look at benzene. Another category is called aromatic. 
And that refers to things that are based on benzene, in which case benzene can be drawn like this. So six carbons in a ring that I have as corners. There are three double bonds that are resonating. So these three double bonds here, here, and here, they don't really belong there. You can think of them as resonating. So often the way we draw it is like this. You just put a circle in the middle. It doesn't mean there's a circle in the middle. It just represents the three double bonds being shared throughout the six carbons. So you can draw it numerous ways. Um, I have one here, another one here, and another one here. All right, so let's go into some of the naming. Because the benzene molecule is so important, rather than naming it by saying that there's six carbons in a ring with three double bonds resonating, it's easiest if you just call it benzene. This one has a single carbon branch, so methylbenzene. Now you might think, oh, we gotta say where the carbon is. Well, if you look at benzene, It doesn't matter where you start your numbering system. In this case, I could say that the carbon right here is on carbon number one. So I could say one methylbenzene, but wherever I put one branch, it's the same thing. So you don't even need to say. Now to this other page. We've got benzene. That's covered. I've got a fluoro and another fluoro. Because there's two, we better number it. Because if we don't number it, it could get confusing to the reader. Sorry, my bad hexagons. The reader might think there's a fluoro here and a fluoro here, and that would be different. Or even a fluoro here, and that would be different. So it's important once you get at least two branches on a benzene or any cyclic structure, you have to start numbering again. So I might as well call one of these carbons one, I'll just say this one, which means the next one would be two. So it'd be one, two, difluorobenzene. Now you might be getting all sneaky and you might think, well, could I number it backwards? Could I call this one, two, three, four, five, six? Could I call it one, six, difluorobenzene? You could, but it's weird. Why use the higher numbers when you can use lower numbers? So keep your numbers as low as possible. This next one, the best we can do is start one of them at number one. That forces the other one to be at carbon four. So that's why it's one four dichlorobenzene. Now, a benzene ring with two attachments is so common, there is a second naming system. So instead of saying one, two, you can say ortho. Instead of saying one, three, you can say meta. And instead of saying one, four, you can say um, para. It's not para, it's not Spanish. And they actually come from Greek. And I don't know how to pronounce it as a Greek person would. So I'll just say para. So for example, this prior one, instead of saying one, four dichlorobenzene, we could say para dichlorobenzene, or sometimes they just abbreviate it with a P. All right, now the functional groups, um, you could also like, you see my notes say, you could call it oxygenated hydrocarbons. Um, sometimes you might see it called substituted hydrocarbons and that just means there's extra stuff. So we've looked at the halogens and now we're gonna look at some other ones. The main thing I want you to know are the categories. So alcohol, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, and the future ones that we're gonna see. That's what I mainly care. The naming of them is not a big deal, but you should know the basics. So let's just go through the different groups. If you have an OH stuck to it, that is known as an alcohol. Notice this is not a hydroxide. R just represents the rest of the molecule. So R could be one carbon, it could be two carbons, it could be a whole bunch of carbons. It just means a bunch of hydrocarbon. And then covalently bonded is a hydroxide. It could be on the end like I have drawn it here. 
or it could be somewhere in the middle. Based on this first thing right here, we don't know. I'm just giving the basics. Um, but again, this is not a hydroxide. It is not an OH minus one. It is covalently bonded. It is part of the molecule. So even though you're going to want to recognize it as a hydroxide, that is incorrect. Here, if you've got a bunch of hydrocarbon, which is my R, and then off of the end, there's a double bond to an O and a hydrogen, like I have here. And here, this is known as an aldehyde. If you have a similar situation where you have a double bond O, but then instead of an H, you have an OH, that is a carboxylic acid. I'll come back to that page in a moment. If you have a nitrogen containing area, that is called an amine. If you have hydrocarbon on one side, an O somewhere in the middle, and then more hydrocarbon, R prime just means a different set of hydrocarbon. So we've got some hydrocarbon on the left, some different hydrocarbon on the right. There's no in the middle, this is known as an ether. If in the middle of the molecule, you have a carbon with a double bond O, this is known as a ketone. And the last one, we're, there are more than these, but the last one we are gonna cover is an ester. And an ester has this in the middle. So you've got some hydrocarbon here, you've got some more hydrocarbon here, and then somewhere in the middle, you've got a carbon double bonded to an O, the carbon is also single bonded to an O, and then on both sides of this, you have more hydrocarbon, which could be a single carbon or a whole bunch of carbons. Now regarding the naming of these things, the alcohol, normally what you do is you just change the ending to all and say where the OH is. So in this example here, five carbons is pentane, so pentanol, and it's on carbon one, so one pentanol. There's an alternate thing where you can name the carbons as a branch. So you could name this as an alcohol, and then you name the rest as a branch. So it would be one pentyl alcohol. Either one works. Um, I'll go through another example in a minute. No, let's do it right now for clarity. If you take a look at two carbons with NOH on it, this would be called ethanol. Two carbons with the OH on the end. You don't have to number it in this case because wherever you put it, it's still going to be carbon one or ethyl alcohol. And this is what's in a lot of sanitizing things like those hand wipes and the desk cleaning wipes that we've been using so much lately. It's also what's in the hand sanitizer that we've been using so much lately. And this is also what is in um, alcoholic drinks is ethyl alcohol or ethanol. Now, if it is an aldehyde, it's the exact same idea, but you just change the ending to a L. So in this case, two carbons, so ethane, but it's got this situation, so ethanol, which sounds kind of weird. Carboxylic acids. Um, sometimes this special area is written like I showed right here. Um, it's a lot easier to type that. So rather than typing what I have drawn right here, they just say COOH. And the way you name this is you use a prefix for the number of carbons and then oic acid. And by the way, a carbon double bonded to an O is referred to as a carbonyl group. So I might use that word here and there. If I forget that we haven't really covered all of this stuff in detail yet. 
So here's an example. This one right here, I could say two carbons. Okay, that's ethane. It's got the double bond O and the OH. So that means it's a carboxylic acid. And so you change it to ethanoic acid. Or I mentioned three different versions for this. You know this molecule by different names. The organic chemist would call it ethanoic acid. The inorganic chemist, which is what this class mainly is, we would call this acetic acid, because if you write it out the other way, it looks like this, CH3COOH. We know that as acetic acid. And of course, the non-chemist would just call it vinegar, which is what you would call it at home. Um, for the amines, you typically just name it as a branch. You name your carbons as a branch. So this is pentane, so it's a branch, so pentol, and amine, so pentolamine. Uh, in this case, if you didn't say the one, people would assume it's one pentolamine, but it's nice to emphasize it. In the case of ethers, you just name each side is a branch. So this is a branch. This is a branch. And because there's an oxygen in the middle, it's an ether. And you just put things in alphabetical order. And this one has a funny name, ethyl methyl ether, ethyl methyl ether. Ketones. There's a couple different ways, but the easiest way is to do what I just did. This is the ketone and name everything else as a branch. So I've got a branch here and a branch here. So this would be ethyl propyl ketone. And esters. What's tricky here is when naming esters, you have to name both sides separately. So you have to name this side and name this side. And um, I won't really expect you to recognize these ones, but I will show this example down here. What I first want to do with the esters is talk about this reaction. Now, I mentioned this reaction at the end of the organic reactions in the last lesson. If you take a carboxylic acid and an alcohol, what they will do is they will make an ester and water. So let's look at this example. Let me zoom in on it a little bit. Here's an alcohol. Here's the carboxylic acid. Uh, I put my hydroxide on the, excuse me, I said the wrong thing, not hydroxide. I put my OH on the other side. I could have also written it like this, R, like that, same thing. And um, you might wonder why is this one R prime, even though there's only one R, and why is this one normal R? I just did that so that they're different. I could have called the one on the left R prime and the one on the right R. It's just I don't want to get confused. So you can call them R1 and R2 if you want. What's going to happen is the hydrogen from right here will pop off and the OH from here will pop off. That makes the water. And then this R is gonna attach where the hydrogen popped off the acid. So this hydrogen's gone, this OH is gone, and the R is going to attach right onto that oxygen. And so notice over here on the right, the hydrogen used to be right here, but that's gone. And now this R from what was the alcohol is now attached. And we now have an ester. If you look at the section here and so forth. And you also get water 
which is left over from the hydrogen and the OH combining. And I know it looks like an H plus and a hydroxide, um, but that's not really what they are entirely. It gets a little bit more complicated if you get into the mechanism of, of how this works. We don't need to do that. Here's a second example. I've got the alcohol butanol, which I've drawn here. I've got the carboxylic acid, ethanoic acid, which I've drawn here. I've only drawn hydrogens that are important. I've left off the extra ones. Well, it's the hydroxide from here. I did it again, not hydroxide. The OH from here on the left and the hydrogen from the carboxylic acid, they form water. And then I've stuck everything together. Now I ended up flipping it around just because that was convenient. So notice my CH3 is here. Let me, let me use a better, let me actually, let me get rid of all this and just do this, yeah. My CH3 is here, CH3. My COO is here, so C, O, O. And then when this hydrogen went away, I was able to attach this C4H9 is here. So I chose to show the hydrogens in my initial reaction, but I didn't bother drawing them in my Lewis structures. Now, just for the sake of discussion, this would be called butyl ethanoate um, because you take this portion that has um, the number of carbons that are attached to this oxygen right here, and that's what you name it as the ethanoate. Actually, no, I got it backwards. You take the number of carbons over here, that's the ethanoate, and then the butyl is what attaches to the oxygen here, and that's where the butyl comes from, is those four carbons and their respective hydrogens that are with it. Okay, let's see what's left so I can get organized here. All right, last thing is isomers. Now, careful, we also did, you might have heard of isotopes, which we're going to talk about in our next lesson, the nuclear stuff. Isotopes are different versions of the same element. Isomers are different versions of the same formula. So for example, if I take this, um, carbon, 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 like that. And if I do this, carbon, 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 carbon. Those two structures are gonna have the exact same formulas. They're both gonna be C4H10. If I take the time to draw all the hydrogens. These two things here and here are isomers. They're different molecules, but the same formula. They have to have the exact same parts. In other words, the same number of carbons, same number of hydrogens, same number of whatever there is. So I have some examples to show the difference between isomers and resonance, because that can be confused. This here and this here, because the double bond is in a different place, they are considered different molecules, they are isomers. However, this here and this here, that's the same thing. It's just the double bond is resonating. So that would be resonance. That would not be an isomer. If we take a look at a couple more. Oh, I just did that one. So those are isomers. Whoops, <laughs> I predicted that one. And then this, you might say, well, hey, isn't, aren't these two isomers? No, they're the same thing. We just drew it from opposite sides. Um, just think of, if you start with this one on the left, 
If you were to walk around this molecule to the other side, it would look like the other thing. Or if you were to grab it with your hand and spin it around, it would look like this inversion. Whereas if I did this, that, here, this one, that would be an isomer of either of these two that were already in the notes. So this one, let me number them. Numbers one and number two are not isomers to each other, but number three is an isomer compared to number one or number two. Okay, um, we'll talk about homework stuff in class. Uh, this lesson was already long enough. The main thing here is to work on the basic naming, which would be things like this stuff. So like this, this, and this kind of stuff, and then the different categories. So like here, alcohol, aldehyde, carboxylic acid, that kind of stuff. All right, another big lesson. We've only got one more lesson after this. So we're almost there.